if you look back at it, uh, we've been climbing the mountain since we've been here and we started at the, the bottom of that mountain. And I think it probably turned around as we ended at home against Western Illinois and Joel Samberski leading our offensive team down the field and uh, winning on the last play of the game with Brandon Robinson catching it. Probably started the whole thing, but. They have gone from worst to first, not only defensively, but as a team, they clinch a share of the Gateway Conference title. <laughs> The 2004 mountain climb began with regional rival Southeast Missouri State, and the Saluki showed they were deserving of a number one preseason ranking. Joel takes a snap, it's Jacobs off the right side, head down to the goal line and in for a touchdown. Brandon Jacobs led Southern's rushing attack in 2004 with 1,012 yards and 19 touchdowns, but he wasn't the only new face in the Saluki backfield. Arkey Whitlock and Terry Jackson joined Jacobs and helped lead the team to an average of over six yards per carry. Every running back has his own style, and uh, you know, in our offense, we ask for one thing, and that's run hard downhill. And then they add their talent to what we do offensively. So Brandon, he was just, you know, a bruiser, you know, he'd come through there, he wouldn't let anything stop him. You know, we had different running backs and everybody kind of brought a little bit different stuff to the table and our key is one of his great abilities is making people miss. And here's Terry Jackson, a guy that, you know, came in, you know, expected to do a lot of huge things for us and, you know, he helped us out a lot when, when we needed it. The O-line would break open holes and then it was just nice to be able to get your block and then look 20 yards downfield and see your tailback still running down the field. In Game 2, the Salukis traveled the length of the state to take on Northern Illinois. The Division 1A Huskies and 28,000 fans would see a battle worthy of state bragging rights. Well, you know, uh, the Northern Illinois game, you know, everybody's talking about 1A versus 1AA. We didn't look at it that way. We just looked at, you know, we, a bunch of football players going to come out, you know, try to win. People didn't expect us to be that close. I, mean, I think we can play it. We play them, uh, you know, seven days a week, we beat them six. We kind of earned a little respect in the state of Illinois. I mean, we kind of let a lot of people know that we can play with anybody. I mean, it was a game that we was down early and we was able to come back. This was a huge play in the game in uh, uh, northern Illinois, and, and uh, that was part of the drive to come back and 
Kellen made a great catch. 103 to play in the ball game. Joel under center, one timeout remaining from the 19 yard line. Takes the snap, short drop, looking left, throwing, caught by Little to 10. He's going to score. Touchdown, Southern Illinois. Southern is within one of the ties. 53.7 left. Coach kind of asked the players, you know what I'm saying, on our opinion, what we wanted to do. And uh, me and so a lot of the other players was like, let's go for two. So uh, we all was, was backing Coach Kill 100% on that. They're going for it. Here we go. Going for two in the win. There's the snap. Play action. Samberski rolls right. Hit as he throws in the end zone. Diving. It's incomplete for Kupa. It's a play we've run a hundred times in practice. And, you know, we execute it correctly every, uh, every time in practice. And, you know, just wasn't there that time. We were inches away from winning the game. And I think they had 23,000 people there or whatnot. And I, I, I said after the game, I don't think there's any way that any of those 23,000 Northern Illinois fans or whoever, how many there were, can leave the game feeling like, you know, not having respect for the SIU football program. And in that sense, it was a victory. After decisive wins over William Penn and Delaware State, the Salukis prepared for the Gateway Conference portion of their journey. We all had a goal to achieve to try to get to the top of the mountain, and uh, we was taking everything step by step. We had high expectations of going, you know what I'm saying, of being able to go a step farther than last year in the conference. Down. I just I uh, try to gather everybody up, tell them let's do this, let's let's step it up. Offense was doing their thing, we weren't showing up. So we have to just go out and just do our best. That's what we do. We uh, just gathered up in a group, you know, coach told us, you know, we we've been down by, you know, this many points before. We can come back. You know, when we got down early, it was always like, let's get back out there. We know the defense is gonna step up. We know this is we're not playing our game. As long as we do the things we need to do, we can come back and make this game and win it. Coach, Coach Kelly put that mindset on us that we have a very explosive offense and we should not worry how, how much we get done because the offense can get us back in the game just like that. Got a block to the 40. It's a foot race. They'll never catch him. It's a touchdown. It is touchdown Southern Illinois. Corey Payne. Handoff, it is Whitlock, off right tackle, touchdown, Southern has the lead. The first Saluki lead. Here he is to throw, he's being pressured, he steps up, he throws to the end zone, intercepted at the three, Southern's gonna win, it's Southern. I told him that I had this half of the field, from the half to the sideline, I was gonna cover that part, and he should just worry about this half. Because all game, they ran, they ran this route where it was like a, a crossing route, like number one was a post route, number two was a corner route. And I told him that play was coming up. I'm like, you know, watch out for that play. Like anything comes to the middle, that's you, you know, just don't worry about it. Because he's supposed to go this way. So I just said, we just worry about inside the hash and that's what he did and he got a pick and it was, it was, it was great. It was great, you know. He made a great play. That was so big. I mean, I, you should have seen me. I was, I think I was, I think I was swimming on the floor or something. I was doing one of this moves, you know. I saw the ball in the air. I mean, my heart started beating, you know, pretty fast, of course, so when I saw the ball in the air and then Marlon, you know, came out of nowhere and made a, you know, outstanding catch, I mean, it was just a sigh of relief when I saw that. Really, I was on a knee and uh, basically praying, hoping that uh, we get this stop. All we needed was one stop. And, uh, Marlon Heaston became a household name after his game-saving interception, but he wasn't the only rising star of the 2004 season. Craig Turner finished the season averaging over 11 yards per carry. He just got wheels, bottom line. He gets open the field, these people aren't going to stop him. And the sky's the limit with Craig Turner at this point. He's going to have a, a big impact on our football program for years to come. Also on the horizon, Corey Payne finished the season behind all-conference selection Brent Little as the number two receiver in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. QP, just like Brent, has a great ability in, in, to be able to make people miss in the open field. And he had some big plays. He had a big play against Northern Iowa. And we knew that he could make plays like he did this year. It was just a matter of fact, get him on the field and showing people what he can do. The defense had a pair of rising stars as well. Linebackers Philip Doyle and Tony Ranella shined in the 2004 season. I mean, I think Doyle surprised a lot of people this year. You know, he came out and stepped up as outstandingly. And 
been a couple of sacks. And the great thing about Tony Ranella is everything he's accomplished is because of Tony Ranella. I mean, he came in and he's worked hard and he's gotten everything, you know, that he's gotten is because of his hard work and effort. With the departure of 18 seniors, the Salukis will look to several rising stars to continue the climb to the top of the mountain. Uh, our athletes are getting stronger, faster, bigger, and we're getting you know, uh, better, but that climb is not an easy one and everything has to fall in place and uh, maybe next year will be that time, maybe it's the year after that, I don't know, but uh, uh, we're certainly working towards that. It's been a group effort to make this football team what it is. Yeah, this is a great pick, and we needed that too. We needed that pick. So we kind of started off pretty slow as a team, and that, I think that right there changed the game. Picked off at the 10 to the 15, he might score. 20, 25, 30. He's, he's going to score. It's Alexis Moreland. He's going to go 95 yards with a tip pass, and it's Southern. It scores first. Alexis Moreland. This is right after Coach Kill got on me on the sideline about a couple of things, and I don't know. I just was wanting to get that off my mind, and uh, getting in the end zone kind of helped that get off my mind right there. Brent Little finished the season with 822 yards receiving, placing number six and sixth in the SIU record books for yardage. The junior wideout has quickly become a quarterback favorite. He's a guy that goes up and gets the ball. He doesn't. It doesn't have to be a perfect pass. It does. You know. He just wants it in the vicinity. And if I can get it in the vicinity, he's going to catch it. And he's a guy that can change the whole complexion of the game on one snap. Tight ends Chris Kupek and Micah Turner also found themselves on the receiving end of Sam Bursky's passes. The tight end combination accounted for nearly 500 yards through the air. So that's a that's a tough position to play because you are you're in the run game with, with blocking schemes and line calls. You're in the passing game with routes and adjustments and, and having to play in space, so to speak. And so those guys are special from that standpoint. You know, me and Micah, we go out there uh, every day. You know, we try to make plays. And, uh, you know, the, the few opportunities that we do get to make those plays, we try to we try to make the best opportunity of those. The next step in the mountain climb meant overcoming the number four Hilltoppers and a defense that was allowing 13 points per game. But it was the Saluki D that came up big in game seven. Left to right. Haddix takes the snap, straight drop, looking to throw. Everyone out in a pattern. Over the middle of the pass is tipped. It's in the air, jump ball, picked off, Southern at the 10 yard line. Going through the Gateway Conference, we, we had a goal set in mind that we was going to come out, dominate any game. Joel to throw, quick toss, far sideline, caught. Comebacker Little cuts up, makes the tackle, 35. Makes a move, center of the field, trying to reverse to the left side. He scores to the 25 to the 20. He might score. 10, 5, run out of bounds. First and goal. Center takes the snap. Play action. Here he is to throw. He has plenty of time. To the end zone, wide open, caught. Touchdown, Brent Little. A few prayers were in order for the 3-0 Salukis against conference foe Southwest Missouri State. 
The Bears hadn't lost to Southern at home since 1986. Up to the 25, breaks the tackle, 30. He's to the 35 to the 40, drags the tackler out to the 42-yard line. A 40-yard run by Brandon Jacobs. On a shotgun, Porter tipped by Moreland, ball in the air. It's intercepted by the Salukis at the 24-yard line. Moreland, who has three interceptions in three weeks, knocked it directly up in the air. It's caught by Jamarcus Jordan in the Salukis and the SMS drive. Cross play, and they run right behind him. Here's Whitlock, blockers in front of him, breaks a tackle at the five, hits to the goal line, dives for the end zone. He got in for the touchdown. A big reason for Southern success can be found up front. The Salukis finished a 2004 campaign number three in the nation in total offense thanks in part to an offensive line averaging over 300 pounds per man. Well, when you know you can fall back on uh, uh, the, the concept and the idea that you're going to be able to beat a team down because you're, you're physically you're in better shape, you're stronger, you're going to be able to do it over, over four quarters. It's, uh, it's a nice feeling to have going into a ball game. That None of the stuff I, I would be able to do on my own. Uh, I haven't had contact behind the line of scrimmage, I don't think, not one time. Just those guys really, really work, and those, and those guys are a, a big part of our offensive success, a big part of it. They make us better, I mean, as a defense, because we're going against, I mean, I think one of the better O-lines in our, you know, our conference, and we go out there to compete against each other every day because we know, you know, we're going against the best. We went out there, and, you know, guys on the offensive line had tears in their eyes. They were wanting to block so well. When you have that type of, a, of an attitude on the offensive line where they're just they're not selfish at all. It's just, it's just a great feeling. And it's it shows Elmer and Will, you know, there's no other offensive line that I'd rather play with than those guys. We just have so much chemistry on the offensive line, you know. We never broke up and it's just real, you know, when, when you have something like that, it's real special. Western Illinois was in for a treat on Halloween weekend, as the only thing more frightening than the costumes was the Saluki defense. Back to throw is uh, LaFalce. He's going to be sacked back at the 14-yard line. He tried to throw it to Norris, but couldn't do it. A quarterback sack by Jamarcus Jordan and Billy Beard. Running back Travis Glassford needed just 67 yards to reach the 1,000-point plateau, but the Saluki defense held the Leatherneck to just 34 yards on 24 carries. As Southern's offense kept putting up points, it was the defense that kept opposing teams off the scoreboard. We've had a great offense here um, for ever, you know, for a long time, and. Um, and the, the reason why we're winning is because of our defense, though. Everything starts up front. Out front eight or front nine is just, is just awesome. Secondary, secondary's nice. You know, we got, we, have some, we got some good players. Our defensive line, like, like you said all year, you know, they're the best in the nation. They're just, you know, dominating. Um, it's great to have a defensive line like that because it makes our job a hell of, hell of a lot easier. And this year, we just headhunted. We just wanted to kill people. We get up there like, man, who's going to get back there first, you know? We, we always compete, even in the games, you know? Who's going to get the sack? Who's going to get the most tackles? Uh, we just always compete with each other, and I think that's what made us better. Phil like that. I told him all year I was the luckiest defensive line coach in Division One football. Just wave after wave kept coming and kept playing, and um, it was kind of relentless. They, uh, they got the job done up front. You know, we thought we should be better than what we were, and. Uh, but to say that you know we were going to be the number one team in scoring defense like we ended up, you know, that's like winning the national championship of defense. You know?
With a win at Illinois State, Southern would earn the automatic conference bid and more importantly secure a return trip to the 1AA playoffs. Joel takes the snap straight back to throw. Has time. Floats it out at the eight. Caught by Southern at the five. It's going to be a touchdown to Matt Weiser. Weiser with the catch coming off the line of scrimmage. Saluki kicker Craig Coffin continued to split the uprights with precision. The sophomore was a perfect 66 for 66 in point after touchdowns and finished second in scoring in the Gateway Conference, only nine points behind teammate Brandon Jacobs. Once I hit him, I just laid on top of him just looking at him. I said, ooh, do you know what I did to you? And he was like, get off of me. I said, boy, do you know what I did to you? He just said, get off of me. Then he pushed me up. So I got up. I said, ooh, next time it's going to be worse. And just, I just turned around. I just, just got, I just felt it. I like, ooh, they can't stop me. Here's Joel, toss play. Whitlock running right behind a Blyce. Why? He's got a block to the 10. He's to the 5, breaks the tackle, dies for the goal line to begin. Yes, he did. The best team in the Gateway resides in Southern Illinois, and the conference's Offensive Player of the Year also calls SIU home. Junior quarterback Joel Samberski finished second in the nation in pass efficiency. He completed 19 passes for touchdowns against just five interceptions and threw for over 2,200 yards in 2004. You know, Joel, he showed what he could do last year. He just, you know, trying to prove it this year, you know. You can sit down with him and you can say, you know, here's some things that we've got to get better at to take another step forward and to improve. And, and he can take what you tell him and he goes to work on it. He was the type of guy, if he did this, uh, you had to do it because he played banged up all year from getting hurt last year. So, I mean, if he came out and gave 100%, there's no reason no one else should come out and give 100%. So. He never has any doubt. I mean, you look him in his eyes, you know, one second left, we got 80 yards. You know, he never has doubt. He thinks he's going to, you know, make the throw and we're going to win the game. It's a, it's a comforting feeling to have him back there. He just wins, you know? I mean, you can't, you can't look at him and make, point out one specific thing. I mean, he's just an all-around great player. Finishing the conference climb meant finishing off the Sycamores and finishing the gateway season as the undisputed champions at a perfect 7-0. I can honestly say our football players that came in and have stayed with us have made Jerry Kill a better person. A better person, not a better coach, a better person. And I appreciate that and I, I think, uh, you know, uh, being one in 10, going through that probably makes the 10 and two that much special. Second down seven, Joel, reverse pivot, toss play. Jackson running right, is uh, hit, gets away at the 35. Got to the boundary, runs to the 40, 45, nice move. Stops, makes two men miss. 50, might score. 45 to the 40, stumbles, runs to the 35 yeah. yard line. And off, it fakes, setting up. Sam Burski going for six, got little, touchdown. They never covered Southern's leading receiver. He was wide open at the four yard line. Draw to Jacobs, he's to the 50, breaks the tackle, 45 of Indiana State to the 40, near sideline, 35 to the 30, two men with angles, 20, 15, breaks the tackle, he's to the 5, pushed into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, winning a conference championship the way that we did was was great, and um, it's something that no conference, no team has done in our conference going undefeated. And Hopefully make sure that we can make it all the way to the top. It's, it's, just, it's right there. So we could grab it, man. We'll just... The great thing about the program where we're at now, you know, we're not having to start back at the bottom. You know, we can start at the summit and try to make that climb again because, you know, we, we don't have to build from scratch. We've got good players coming back and, and go on from there. The higher you go, the steeper the climb, the tougher the obstacles. And uh, we still got work to do, but of course, we want to win a national championship.